Welcome back to another Clash of Code with me, Captain Coder. If you're not familiar with Clash of Code is, it is a small programming competition challenge at Code Endgame. <clears throat> you compete with up to eight other participants in a clash. In public matches, you can do a private match and get paired with just your friends or maybe you're on a Discord channel, something like that. And then you can have, I think, as many as you want, as long as you, as long as you have two people in it. So in Clash of Code, you get a puzzle, usually relatively easy. You need to know the basics of coding, for loops, variables, if statements, uh, methods, and then you have to solve some sort of problem statement. Let's see what we get here. So we have a fastest mode. This is the most traditional one, fastest mode. You have to solve a puzzle as fast as possible. First person to solve it gets first place. And you have some inputs and output test cases. So we have a problem statement, implement a function that accepts an integer of 10, a string of 10 integers. Have the function return those numbers as a string in the form of a phone number. Okay, so this is a formatting problem. You take in the integer and then you want to format it as a phone number. This is a United States phone number in case you're outside of the United States. So we've got 10 digits coming in. Okay, so there are many ways to do this. Let's, I'm going to do mine. You can, another cool thing about coding game, you can pick most common programming languages. I think they got quite a few here. Let's go ahead and do this one in Python. My Python's not great. I don't program in Python all that often. So this is a good little practice for me to get syntax refresher. So they usually give you a little bit of a template to use. So in this case, they've already read in our input and went to print the answer. So let's check out what that looks like if we run the test case. So our inputs, the numbers one, the digits one through 10, one through zero, 10 is not a digit. And uh, then the output should like this. If I hit play test case, you'll see my program just prints the word answer and it says it found answer, but expected this output. So the approach I am going to take is I'm gonna do a loop that's gonna loop through this, this uh, looks like they're inputting it, they're reading it as a string. We'll loop through each index and <clears throat> format it the way we want. So I'm gonna write a function that's set called like format string. All right, because they say write a function. You don't have to actually write a function. You could just write a code that does it. I'm gonna write a function because that is what the problem statement is saying to do. And we're gonna practice all the, the basic things here. All right, so we got a def, right? Is that how you do functions in Python? Def format phone number. And we're gonna take in an S. That's gonna be our string to format. And we know that the length of the string is always 10. If you were writing some sort of production code, you'd probably do some if statement checks, that sort of thing to ensure that this thing was of the correct length. But we know for sure that it's 10. And I only got 10, 12 minutes left to do this. So let's go ahead here. So given an S, we want the first three digits. So we're gonna do a substring. So in Python, I think we do substrings like this. So I'm going to index zero to three. Let's see what that does. I'm, I'm, I'm really curious. This is a refresher for me. I can never, uh, you know, I, I work in many programming languages and I don't work in Python all the time. So let's, let's see what uh, happens if I call format phone number with my input S here. Oh, no semicolons in, in Python. Are they optional in Python? They might be optional. I know they're optional in JavaScript. All right, so my substring zero, two, three. It's not gonna include the third index. It's gonna go to the third index. So I got one, two, three. So what I want is a substring that is open parenthesis plus close parenthesis around that. I wanna return this. All right, so I want my format number to return. It doesn't actually print it out. I want to return it. And so then I can actually do a print, call it like this. Let's make sure it's still working. All right, so I got that. Then I can do a plus here, and I need to get the next three digits. So S, oh, plus. I got someone yelling at me, probably in the comments, like, use an F string, use an F string. So I'm gonna use an F string after this, I promise. 
All right, so three, and we gotta get, uh, I believe this is two, six, is that right? Uh, three, no, 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 seven. Let's see what that does. Uh, oh, I was right the first time, the six. All right, three to six. And then I need to put in a dash. And then I need to do an S that goes from six to the end. All right, so the substring in Python, if you, I, Pretty sure, someone yell at me if I'm wrong. You can just put a, a colon, it says start at six and go to the end. Let's see how we do, play this test case. All right, that one passes. Let's play all of our test cases. And all of our test cases pass, so not bad. So like I was saying, you could do an F string instead. And let's see if I can remember how to do F string. So in Python 3, I think it has a version like 3.6, it's been in there for a while. If you put an F in front of, a string I believe I can do curly braces this is um, let's see if that's right so I'm not getting a, a syntax there so it's a little bit interesting if you put an F in front this lets you do what is often called string interpolation where you can put variables or like pieces of code inside of the text so in JavaScript you use a tilde and then you have some string interpolation um, let's let's rerun our test case to make sure we didn't break anything. Okay, and so now we can we can fix this like so, and then no space there. So it's a little bit, in in my opinion, a little bit easier to read if we do it this way. So we have the f string, and then you just drop that right in there as such. Okay. All right, so this is the same as, I think there is, this is sort of shorthand for a string formatter. Um, so let's, we got we got some time, and I don't remember exactly how it works, so let's Google it. Let's see if we can uh, change this, if we can go through different iterations of this function. This is pretty good, I'm pretty happy with this. All right. I'll take a sip of my butterscotch. Black butterscotch coffee. So it's a Don Francisco butterscotch toffee. Uh, I find it fascinating and delicious. All right, sorry, let's Google here. We are gonna search for uh, format string Python. All right, so there's a format method. I knew there was a format method. I'm gonna go to the docs specifically. W3 schools can be good sometimes, but I'm gonna go to the docs and read about it here. And so they're saying, ah, oh, we got input answer, fancier output, formatted string literals. All right, so we can use F strings here, F for format. Um, this is shorthand for the format method that comes on strings. So we can do something like this. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out how to do this because I'm, like I said, I'm rusty with Python. But let's let's see if we can get it to work this way. So supposedly, oh, and in Python, this seems to be suggesting that I should be using single quotes uh, instead of double quotes. Python, you can sort of interchange those two things, um, which I always find fascinating. Okay, so I think if I want to update this, let's see if we can get just one here. Let me. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on my clipboard in case I run out of time. I'm gonna jam it back in at the last second. Oh, oh, actually, let's just do def format phone number uh, attempt to. Then I don't have to lose it and I can just easily switch between these two uh, things. So return. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna use single quotes this time because because we're fancy. It looks like I'm gonna do zero three like this dot format and let's pass an S like this. So this is the parameter that we're here. Uh, if you're, if you're newish to Python, the name of this actually doesn't matter. So I might actually say like phone number would, would probably be a better variable name than S. So shame on me for using single letter variable names. Um, and then here we pass in the S. All right, I'm getting, I'm getting slightly off top here. Hopefully that wasn't confusing. Let's check. Uh, oh, I got to switch to this one here. All right. 
found one, two, three, four. So it output the whole thing. So I'm wrong on how to format it here. Um, I could do zero to three. Let's see. I should probably actually read the documentation. I think what's happening here is I can do just zero like this. It's going to take argument zero from the uh, parameter zero from the argument list. <clears throat> All right, so if I wanted to, I could do zero twice in here. I'd actually get it multiple times, even though I've only passed in once. All right, so my format actually happens to be like this. And then I'm gonna do uh, one dash two, like this. And then I have to give in my arguments. So this is gonna be phone number three to six. And then the last one was phone number Make it so you can see it a little bit better. Phone number um, six to the end. So if I do this, you might argue that this string here is a little bit easier to read, especially if you're doing like a table or something, it might be much easier to read this way than having that F string directly in there. Let's check it out, see how I did. All right, so fun fact before, I think it was, it might've been Python 3.8, I don't remember. I was doing a lot of programming in Python back in 3.4 through 3.8. Um, I worked for a company where their, their backend was all in Python. So I was doing a lot of Python at that time, but since then I haven't done much and we're on, I think Python 3.11 just came out. All right, so yeah, yeah. So used to, you, there wasn't a format, there wasn't F, wasn't an F string. And then you would do a dot format, but then F strings came out as just a nice little syntax. So I think this is just what's called syntactic sugar. So it does the same thing. I think at, at the end of the day, it converts it to something that's essentially the same as this. All right. So that is, let's see if all my tests, did I already do all my test cases? Probably I had a little exclamation point, so I'm not sure. All right. So these are the two ways that I can accomplish this. There might be more ways. If I did something dumb or you have a better solution, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear how you went about it. Uh, our solutions in Python. What, what, what language are you using? Let me know. Let's click submit here. Another thing I love about coding game is there is such an encouragement to share code so other people can see uh, solutions. Say, say I was, uh, one of these people, I'm new to programming. This one just got me. I going, I don't know how to do this. Whatever programming language you happen to be using. At the at the end, you can see anyone who has submitted their code and say, oh, this person got 100% that, so I did it. Or maybe there was a test case you couldn't get through. You can go and watch, see how they were done. So um, Gmal 143, under two minutes. Nice job. Let's take a look here. Yeah, yeah, so remember how I said they didn't actually have to write a function? This person did not write a function, they just went straight for the F string. All right, nice work. Essentially the same solution we had in Python. C Sharp, one of my favorite languages. It's a little bit more verbose than Python, absolutely more verbose than Python for short problems like this. This person chose to do a, a for loop solution. Not bad, there is a string formatter in, um, C sharp, and there's also string interpolation in C sharp. So, uh, but sometimes you do what you know to practice it, or maybe they just wanted to practice it. They're like, I really want to practice this for loop. So let's look at how they did it here. They did a for loop. So they're iterating through all of their, all of their letters, all of the characters, all of the digits. They shouldn't, be, shouldn't say letters, all of the digits, all of the characters in their string. And they're saying they're going to append that value. Oh, okay, so they actually start out by putting the opening parenthesis. And then they have like some special cases. So because we know it's a, 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 a phone number, we know exactly which indices to add this extra stuff. So they just are saying, okay, well, I'm going to accumulate. I'm going to keep appending my characters. And then after the the second index after the third character, I'm going to add in this thing. And then after the fifth one, I'm going to add in that thing, the dash. And then finally they're going to print it out. So 
maybe not the, the the simplest cleanest solution but that gets it done that's one of the beautiful things about programming i don't know if beautiful is the right word but one of the, the things about programming that i love is there's there is some room for creativity and problem solving and so this person managed to solve it in a different way than we did and so i hope this person i hope this person came in looked at some of this and went oh you can do some strings although they were in c sharp so they may not know how to uh, do substring in C-sharp. It's very similar in C-sharp. All right. I enjoyed that. It was very, I thought this was a fun puzzle. I thought it was a little bit on the easy side. Uh, string, string, substrings. You didn't need to do loops. So so to, for me to say it is a perfect difficulty, you have to have logic ifs, you have to have loops and and hopefully some functions. So ifs and loops, I think, are the perfect types of difficulties for these short 15 minute ones. I thought this one was too easy because you don't actually need those. You can do them. You saw we can do them. You don't need them. Uh, the problem statement I thought was was plenty clear. I knew exactly what to do. And the test cases, I'm gonna go with good. I don't know. I, I think you could have come up with a better problem and said, well, it's possible you get invalid inputs and so you have to test invalid inputs as well. I think that would have made this a little bit better. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. I had, I had a great time doing it. If you liked this, if, if you felt like this was useful for you, click that like button for me. If you wanna see more of this, go ahead and subscribe. What programming language do you wanna see? Let me know in the comments and come back anytime. As always, have a beautiful day. See you next time.